The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. You are now entering the all-consuming realm of Shay's Paranormal Chat, where the things that are better left unsaid are actually said. Shut up and sit down. You're listening to Shay's Paranormal Chat. Paranormal podcasting done Shay's way. Tons of fun. Dude, seriously? A bit sarcastic. Hashtag investigator, not hunter. But always real. Hashtag data, not evidence. Don't get your panties in a twist. Oh my god, really? This is real, raw conversation. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 40 of Shay's Paranormal Chat. I am by myself for now. We have a couple guest co-hosts coming very, very soon. Um, They're just running a little late and... um, So I am going to try to get into chat here. Hold on, give me a second. The chat's already full, and I appreciate all the love and support, guys. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Let's do some shout-outs. We have, of course, we have Darren. We have Josh, who's already yelling out fuck. Um, We have Miss Kim. We have Cynthia. And we have... I think I saw Wolf in here somewhere. There we are. There's Wolf. So thank you guys. Thank you for all coming. Um, I'm trying to keep up. And um, thank you, Cynthia. I missed you guys too. Um, my speaker, sh- my speaker one is running backwards tonight. So forgive me if I screw up a little bit on the comments, but. Um, Kelly should be joining us soon, as soon as she can anyways. She's going to try, so we're hoping. Um, Roland is at work. Oh, I'm sorry, Roland. Yes, please don't forget to hit, thank you, Wolf, don't forget to hit the like button because um, this is a last-minute show. It's a pop-up show, and um, this is really hard for me to do, guys. Um but I figured let's do it tonight, catch up with all my chat people um, rather than waiting because my next show is in two weeks and we have Mishala Hardin in two weeks, so that will be exciting. Um, <sighs> who's late? Darren's late. <laughs> um, anybody that's listening to the replay, thank you very much for coming. If you're listening in the background, thank you so much. I'm just trying to keep up on chat here because that's what tonight's about. Tonight's about chat. Josh just got off of work 20 minutes ago. Long week. It's been a long... I've been on air for six weeks, guys, so... I got you. Thank you, Darren. Thank you for sharing. You guys have any questions yet? If you have any questions, throw them out there. Um, hopefully the sound is good because I didn't even do a sound check. I, um, I've i been on break for, like I said, it's been six weeks since I did a live show. So I wanted to come back and see how everybody's doing, what everybody's up to, and um, go from there. 
Well, thank you, Darren. Everything sounds good. That's always a plus because you never know with live radio, even when you think you're doing good, you're not. So, um, here we go with all the ums. You can tell anxiety. Um, 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 um. Let's count how many times Shay says um tonight. No, I have not been. Cynthia asked if I have been investigating lately. I have not. And, um, uh, I have not been. I, I'm starting to think of going somewhere local. Um, but it's just not been on my priority list. Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, um, is moving next Friday actually we're moving her into her dorm room so I've been spending as much time with her and I had a death in the family um, a very close death in the family so um, investigating the paranormal and talking about spirits has not been a high priority but it's been about six weeks now so I'm I'm trying to jump back into things the best I can um, it's been a little difficult but here I am uh, so, um, Josh, Josh wants to know if he's supposed to wear panties in here. Josh, you can wear panties, boxers, no panties, no boxers, whatever it is you want to wear because I can't see you, so I don't care. But that made me, that made me smile. Yeah, Irish, thank you, Kim. See, Kim's been around for a long time, although this is only episode 40 of this show. I was on another network and did seven or ten episodes there and was a co-host on another show for a long time. Yes, Irish drinking game. Every time Shay says um, you get a drink. Whether it's Pepsi, Mountain Dew, beer, whatever. Mine will be water for tonight. No, Cynthia, I'm so behind that I'm still posting pictures of Gettysburg from June because I just, I took so much time off. Um, that I'm way behind on everything. I haven't done any editing. I haven't done any review. I haven't done anything. So I am a. Uh, how many cups of coffee today? I've had about six pots of coffee at least. I lost count, but at least. I don't understand that, Josh. You're you're over under things, so you have to explain. But I have thousands of pictures I still haven't shared from this year. Um, mm -hmm. I just do them a little bit out of time. Um, tons of pictures I still have to share from Gettysburg that we went to in June. I just yeah, I'm way I'm so far behind, but that's okay. Hey, you know, um, I think we have Kelly gonna be joining us very shortly here um, and a surprise I believe so let's see let's see how this goes wish me luck guys my first merge my first merge call um, I don't function after six pots of coffee Cynthia that's a problem I need at least at least eight here we go Hello, is this my Kelly? Is it my Kelly? Hello, um, we are live on air. So, um, the Irish drinking, I know I said there was a surprise coming. I didn't say who yet, though, because I wasn't sure. Uh. Yeah, she's going to be at, hold on, you're at low volume. That's because she's on the phone, guys. She's on the road. She's been on the road so much. Hold on, I'm trying to see if I can fix it. I think you're at high volume, though. Let me just double check here. Kelly's a whisper, really quiet. Huh. All right. 
Um, let's see. Well, wait 20 seconds. Sounds good to me, but we'll see what they say. She she's she's not on the phone while she's driving. It's on speaker, guys. It's the same as listening to a radio and singing. Sit. Yeah, right. Ah, uh, same. Oh, I hear I hear our mystery guest. Hello. Kelly, would you like to introduce him or would you like me to? All right, and with my mass accent, I hope I don't screw up his last name, but everybody, please, the one, the only, Chris Nielsen. Did I say it right? All righty. See? See? Not bad. And nobody even knew you guys were coming. It's still the same, but turn up the volume, listeners. Yes, go ahead. Yep. They'll just have to put their listening ears on. There we go. Um, we have court. <laughs> Just, you get, you get a yell a little. That's okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. They adjusted the volume. How's that, guys? All right. They said the volume is up. How about now, guys? Oh, my gosh. They, that should be better. There we go. It was Skype. The volume was down on Skype, so we're good now. There you go. So, you guys want to fill us in? Where are you off to? Oh, uh, DeKalb, Illinois. Does that sound all right? I think so. DeKalb, I don't DeKalb. honestly know. DeKalb, 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 DeKalb. It's D-E-K-A-L-B. We're going to that place. Nice. We are heading to the Spookcon Paracon. That's, um... Spook Show Con. Show? Spook Show Con. Is that what it is? Spook yeah. Show Con? Spook something. Um, you're lucky I know where I'm at right now. Um, I have so this is Chris, so good luck. Put your seatbelt on. Really oh, tight. Oh, I'm very aware. Yes. <laughs> I just went to shitty with him in the car, too. And yeah, it was not a place I was supposed to do it. The cars were all looking at us like, what the hell are you doing? Trying to get to my exit. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. My, my hand is almost perpetually on the oh shit bar. Yeah, I almost fell out the door because of the 360 she pulled. That up, had was... nothing... No, no, no. That had nothing to do with my driving. That had completely to do with the bugs that were in my back seat. And the driving. Wow. That was only a small part of it. <laughs> so keep the doors closed. You guys were fine. We could barely close the doors. We had so many people in the car. <laughs> Oh, it was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah, there was quite a few times. I mean, if the gals who uh, went with me were listening, don't take this wrong because I had a blast with you guys too. But there were several times that I'm like, oh, I wish Shay was here with me. Yeah. I wish I was anybody yeah. but here this week, so, you know. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep. But there, there are plans being made to go back yes. and uh yeah yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll let you know yes it's, yeah. um so for anybody who doesn't know i just got back from penhurst hey if you're talking about it in chat i just haven't had a chance to relay the messages from chat yet kelly cannot see the oh, chat tonight fine. guys obviously she's driving so if your message doesn't get answered uh, your question doesn't get answered it's my fault blame me Oh, there's no blame in here. It's it's a very very cool place, definitely. Um, and it, I I think it's almost a place that you have 
to go back to more than once to be able to like fully appreciate it because it's just so big. Yeah. Um, most places are even the small ones. I think you need to go back to, but some place that big, definitely. I mean, you can't get the full. <laughs> what are we laughing no, at? No, you. Didn't. <laughs> Chris is being a twelve-year-old. <laughs> He'll fit right in on the show then. He does. This is he why we are like friends. Quiet. Oh, good. I was, trying to, I was trying to silently laugh that off. Oh, my God, no. Shay and I are so ridiculously inappropriate. And, oh. And, yeah. The whole network <laughs> is explicit because I'm a co-owner. So it's, like, automatically explicit. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. All right, let's catch up on chat, yeah, and then yeah. I want to hear from Chris a little. But I want to – I'm trying to uh, – Darren wants to know, how is Penhurst? Uh, uh, Cynthia says you forgot to pick her up on the way. Josh Smith says, remember, you're only speeding if you get caught. Cynthia again exactly. says, Kelly, you forgot me. Uh, Darren wants to know you were in my trunk. Uh, she, yeah, we thought you were in the trunk. Sorry. Uh, uh, you, you were supposed to be in my trunk when I pulled away. How do you think Chris got here? Yeah, that's true. If you never invite me anywhere, I just got to take it up. Uh, oh my god, that's funny. Uh, if he's not in the trunk, I go kidnap him. It's all good. He's he's kind of loud for being in the trunk, so I think he's, you know, good. Yeah. He's kind of used to it. He's adapted. I know I rambled all those questions off, but here's a couple more so I can say I'm all caught up. Darren wants to know if you caught any good EVPs, which I don't think he had time to review anything yet, but that's my opinion. Josh says, wait, he's mooning people, meaning Chris, while Kelly's driving. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, Kim got invited to go to Penhurst, but um, she doesn't have the money to go to get there yet. Yeah, I understand that. Chris yeah. and Cynthia says Chris is supposed to ride on the roof, so... I'm all caught up, whether we remember the questions or not. I don't know. Okay, so Penhurst was pretty cool. Um, it was it was just amazing to be able to walk around and see all the buildings and see the history. Uh, the unfortunate part is the buildings that I was drawn to were the buildings that we couldn't get into because you can't get into all the buildings still. Um, they're just they're falling apart to the point that they're not safe. Um but we did get into some of them, and um, I can't tell you if I have any EVP, and that is a sore subject for me today. Thank you very much. Um, I had taken my recorder with me on this trip because Chris and I had been out to that Building 52 like two weeks ago or something like that, two, three weeks ago. The county home and yeah, something like that. It was the, the county home in Wisconsin. And... We were trying to get through all of our evidence because they want to sit down with the the um, client and just kind of go over what all we found. So I had taken my recorder with me on my trip. Data. 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 Excuse me. Data. Thank you. Um, I like shit. <laughs> so do I. Um, but I hadn't downloaded anything off of my recorder, so it had all of my Building 52 recordings. It had my Barrar investigation that we just did, and it had all of my Penhurst stuff on it. It's all gone. What? What, what happened? I have no idea. There's the recordings that were on there. Or just the recording? No. Oh, I've had the that recording. Happen. Yeah. There's, there's other recordings that are on there that are older, that are still there, but all of those are completely gone. And it, I'm just... I'm a little sick to my stomach about it because it's like I didn't even get to listen to the Penhurst ones before they were gone. Man. Yeah. I've had that happen. When, yeah. uh, when we, you, we, meaning Kelly and I, were in um, Gettysburg, we did a bunch of different things separate from each other. But um, one of the places me and Nicole and Carrie did without Kelly was... Um, the orphanage, the Gettysburg Haunted Orphanage, uh -huh. and I lost, let's see, 
from one device, the EVP recorders, we lost all audio. From my phone, we lost all pi uh No. From my sister's phone, we lost all pictures, and we lost all of my videos. Like, from you three different... all of that? Yeah, three different devices. It just disappeared. We had it when we left, and boom, it was gone. Oh. The delete button, it would have deleted everything on the recorder, yeah. but it only deleted a couple. Yeah, and so my delete options on that recorder is delete all files, or I have to go in and delete them one by one. And I didn't delete them one by one, so what the hell happened to them? Ah, frustrated. Well, I think our listeners should be drunk, drunk by now because Josh said the um counter for my ums for tonight because I have some anxiety about tonight. Um, see, there we go. Is Josh drinking every? Wait, no, is Josh but, drinking every time we say um? That was the Irish game that Kim suggested. Was oh, that might have been oh. when you came on, um, or as you were coming so on. Does he just have to drink? Yeah. I will fuck with him. Uh, Paranormal Buzz Radio hasn't done a drinking game in a long time, and I think we're about due. Oh, we should totally. So if you pull over, I can I can park this way right now. <laughs> we may or may not stop in the car. <laughs> I'm driving, so I would behave. behave. I would behave. All right. Well, well, let's before I forget, let's ask Chris Nielsen to tell everybody that does not know who he is. I don't know who possibly could not know who he is, but. Chris, who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm Chris Nielsen, the barrel investigator for about 10 years now. Uh, I'm from Northeast Iowa, but my recent uh, endeavors have been going under the name Paranomatic uh, because I just kind of travel. I don't have a like I have a technical home address where my mail goes to, uh, but I travel with the season. So, like right now, I'm in Northeast Iowa. This last winter, I was in Arizona. This upcoming winter, I'll probably uh, right now I'm going to be either in Flagstaff or a hot springs resort in Southern California. So, oh wow! Either That's way, I'm gonna difference. let you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys have fun with the uh, Iowa winter without me this year. I don't blame Except you. for the time that I go visit him. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I'm I, I, I'm, come to New Hampshire. Come to New England. It snows there. Like not in the summer. <laughs> well, we we may or may not have been talking about some road trips. Yeah. That would bring us up into your neck of the woods. Tanya. Yeah. Yes. Somebody has failed to put together this map for me, though, so I can start making plans. Something in my head. That doesn't help me. <laughs> you don't want me climbing around in your head, remember? Cynthia, where it did Cynthia place. got kicked out? But where did she get kicked out of? She didn't say. She just said she got kicked out. So, um, I think I don't know where she is. Not, not paranormal related, but I have to kick her out of my head quite often. Does that count? Could. Maybe. I don't know what she's talking about. Maybe she's playing the drinking game, too. She could be. Oh, she got kicked out of the chat. Okay, I gotcha. I thought uh, she did. That's way more boring than what we were coming up with. Yeah. You know, this is this is the fun episode. This is the crazy episode. Like, like all my shows aren't, right? Right. I could be a guest on a show and it, it goes downhill quick. But they're always fun. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Always fun. Yeah. So, Chris, you went through your evidence for Building 52, right? I did. So, what did we, what did we oh, get, actually? Yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, with the 52 building, uh, the first floor was definitely the talker for us. I was talking to this earlier on in the night. It was uh, the building's first paranormal investigation. So I feel like as the night progressed, they started kind of getting tired with us. Uh, so I actually have little to nothing off of the third floor, um, which is where we ended up at, like, the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the the first floor, it wasn't, uh, 
it's weird. You can almost tell it was new to them because we would. I uh, had a couple EVP during that session where it wasn't so much intelligent responses, but it was very clear, definite, like almost incoherent babbling a couple times, like over us talking. Or uh, found a really good video file, which I'm gonna let. Uh, Jim Winter kind of do his big public reveal for the investigation, like the employees and everything that worked there. Uh, but then I'll have a video clip coming out of, uh, uh, it's pretty good. I don't know if you call it partial manifestation, apparition, uh, but I had a static camera sitting on the first floor and it kind of looks like a illuminated version of a person kind of walking around the front desk that it's on. Uh, so I'll kind of put that out there for people to kind of check out, look at. It's not super defined. It's definitely not the clearest thing I've ever seen. Uh, but it's definitely a... Uh, it's not that YMCA picture. It's definitely not that YMCA picture. Uh, but, yeah, some, uh, some cool stuff out of it. A lot of intelligent uh, ITC responses. Yeah, it was a neat place, and and there was there was a lot of truth to what Chris was saying because like we the group that we were with, Jim um, Winter and Transcendent Paranormal Society, um, that was the first group to be able to get in there and investigate. But we were also the last. So we had like a couple week window that we could get in there and investigate before the building came down. Yeah, that so. building's gone now. So it's weird so, to think. It is. So you, you guys were the first and last. We were, yep, first, last, and only. Oh, wow. I've been out of the yep. loop. I know. I've been out of the loop for, it's been a long month or so. Yeah. You are all good. So, yeah, it was interesting. And I think the fun part about that one is um, I, I didn't realize at first that we were going to have, like, a bunch of people from the public there with us uh, until, like, a day or two ahead of time. But it really wasn't just public people. It's people who had worked in that building before. So they had all had their own personal experiences. That's why they were there. So that was kind of an interesting aspect to it. And, I mean, it it made it like we had 20 trigger objects there with us. It was amazing. What was some of the trigger objects you used? The employees. The previous employees. Oh. So you used it was people. the people who've been working in that. You used people as yeah. Me. It was all. That's what you need. All right, I've done that. Yeah, these were the fleshy people who worked in that building three weeks before we were there. Wow. So yeah, so this, you can't. Get I'm much sorry. Work. I know. So this place closed, and then they. Fill up yeah, the, the building detail. was. The building was older, yeah. and it had some some structural things that it just would have been really, really expensive to update it and make it um, so it was a good building to continue to work in. So rather than drop the money in the old building, they just build a brand new one. Yeah. So the new one was built. The new one was built, and it's actually kind of right next door to where the old one was. So they had moved everything out into the new building. And there was a couple weeks in between where they'd moved out and it was going to get torn down, and that's when we all got to go in. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So I did see part of one of the videos, but I didn't know any of the information or anything. Um, so we have... Hold on. We have a couple questions here because I will forget. The chat is really hopping, so I'm having trouble... I, I don't have Kelly to help me keep up, so I'm having trouble here. Um, <laughs> I can gonna, watch, but then we'll die. Yeah. We're going to start with Josh's because it's just a comment. Not paranormal related, but Peter Fonda died. Um, and then Darren wants to know. I'm going to ask two questions in a row, so give me a second. Um, Darren wants to know, Chris, what is the scariest place you've ever been to? And then... First off, Cynthia wants to know, this is an easier question, so Cynthia wants to know if Kelly's excited about going to the Sally House. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what I think. Mean, yes and no. Okay. So, so that's a mixed answer. I am excited. I'm, I'm excited to get there. It's a place that everybody talks about, so there's that little excitement part of me. 
but I would be lying if I didn't say there's part of me that's nervous too. Yeah. Um, it's, it's got a reputation and there's people that I know who've been in there before who are like, it's not a place to go mess around. And Christopher's not going with me. So, you know, it's, <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. But I, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. When, the, when are you guys doing that? Uh, Labor Day weekend. Nice. Labor Day weekend. Uh, for anybody Thank that you. doesn't know, you that's question. coming up in, like, two weeks. Right? Two Versus, weeks? Yeah, two weeks, I think. Uh, no, three weeks. Three weeks, okay. Three, two, three. Three weeks. Okay. Three weeks. The, the second, September 2nd, September 1st and September 2nd, whenever that is. Something like that. I don't All know. All right. So, Chris. We'll let Chris talk about his various place. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, place? I don't know. For me, personally, uh, when I come, like, the first one that comes to my mind is, like, a place that's rattled me. Uh, I was being Bird Manor in Scottsboro, Iowa, but that wasn't so much, I don't want to say it wasn't the location, because as a whole it is very, you know, active location, but it was also the circumstances. Um, so for those that might not know, uh, the Bird Manor was uh, open as the Jones, uh, the property was open as the Jones County Fort Farm in 1856. And then in 2000, not 2000, 1910, they opened up a building that was open as the Jones County Home for the Incurably Insane. Uh, and obviously they developed a little bit more of a PC name, but then up until 2010, they operated with that. And I, having a fair amount of young and dumb still in me, closed myself in there almost <laughs> for a week. Uh, five days, technically, but... Uh, yeah, I had tackled a 110-hour investigation in a, a highly active place by myself. And I don't know, it's one of those places that I start to wonder if, like, paranormal PTSD is the thing. Uh, it, it left me with paranoia problems, uh, that sort of thing. And it was, it's like, it is a very highly active place. Uh, for the first time in quite a while, I'd seen a full-bodied apparition in the building. There was just a constant... Uh, flow of activity, so I, I got to give that to the Edward Manor. Uh, the place is just kind of comes out of my mind. It's the scariest location I've been. To. Most intense experience. Yeah, most intense experience. Nice. Well, kind of nice. I never know how to respond to that. Like, I got so much paranormal activity, and you're like, awesome. And then my second thought is, I don't know if that's awesome, but it is awesome that you caught it. I don't know if it's awesome that oh, it's yeah. here, but nice that you caught it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's one of those things like uh, whenever we do, like, expo conventions, that sort of thing, uh, there's always someone that comes up to you and, like, this is happening in my house and this is happening in my house. And you can tell they're rattled by the situation, but as a paranormal investigator, you're like, oh, my God, that's incredible. Right? Like, you get, like, giddy about it when you probably shouldn't see it. Somebody's murdered in my house. That's phenomenal. Tell me more. You know, it's like, that's not the proper response. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and I thought about that. So, like when I went when I went into Penhurst on Tuesday night, I'm walking around almost freaking giddy because it was so cool. It was just so cool to it be is. there. It really but I is. It was until you think about it. Yeah, and I had to stop myself a couple times and go. There were people who were horribly abused here and lost their lives. And they were here because nobody wanted them. And that's not necessarily the place to be walking around going, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know. Yeah. But I did, and I have, I'd have to catch myself and, like, yeah. hang on a minute here. Let's bring it in a little bit. I think our excitement shows that, um, and correct me if you guys don't agree, I, I won't get butthurt. But for me, it's more excitement of the data I might collect and putting one more foot forward towards proving something's really happening or proving something's not happening, whichever happens first. It's not over the people that have passed away that are stuck or choose to be there. It's more of proving. Yeah. But it can be misinterpreted. 
And and for me, for this location, it was more that I was getting to be there and yes. see that piece of history, you know, and and that this is a place that I've watched on TV for how many shows and that uh, that people have gone to, how many thousands and thousands of people have been there and, and friends who take shows there. And, you know, I mean, it was, there was that excitement of it. But, yeah, it wasn't the excitement of, ooh, there's a lot of people who died here. It was... It was that I was getting to be a part of that history at that exactly. point. Exactly. Yep. I hear you. Same thing for me. But yeah, it, it is. It is kind of a dark history, and it was just kind of like, it, yeah, let's let's not be throwing a party right now, Kelly. Uh, Penhurst is my number one place um, that I want to go to. I haven't been there yet, but hopefully soon. It's hopefully being planned. Um, <coughs> cough, cough. Um, <coughs> you know, the other places I I got to go to um, Eastern State Penn this summer. Um, my next place is we Lizzie go Borden's. Too. Yes, we want to go there too. <laughs> I'm not far from the Lizzie Borden's. I grew up here, so it's never been more than two hours away from me. So it's never been a high priority because you're so close. You're like, oh, I can do that anytime I want. Kind of deal. Well, in in that same line of of Penhurst and Eastern State, Lizzie Borden, we might as well tack on Salem, right? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, Salem's awesome. I've been to Salem. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. One of See? my favorite oh, that- cemeteries. One of my favorite cemeteries to investigate because I'm not a big cemetery. I we do a lot. Of, we do a lot of cemeteries, but don't get a lot. There's one in Salem that we get a lot on, and um. It's not a famous one. It's just, just little unknown cemetery. So, let's see. Uh, I had to be gone to this. Well, we're gonna we're gonna say this and then skip right. Yeah, Cynthia, come to Salem. It's less than two hours from me. Darren said Kelly almost pissed herself in Penhurst. Then we're gonna skip that. And um, Darren also wants to know Chris. <laughs> No, it was a funny story, though. So <laughs> it was during one of it was during one of the lives. Um, there's this there's tunnels underneath Penhurst, and we're down in the big tunnel, and it was it echoes throughout there. So I was trying to get to where it was a little quieter, and so I had wandered clear down to the end of this one tunnel, and Lisa had been with me, but she'd wandered off by all by and left me there by myself, which was fine. And so I thought, well, I'll start a live. But um, we had wandered down to the end of there, and there were three sets of doors, one on the left, one on the right, one tree in front of us. And I looked through the window of the one on the left, and it's just this long corridor, and I looked through the tunnel of the one on the, the, the door, window of the one on the right. It's just another long corridor. And I shine my flashlight to the one that would have been straight in front of us. There's this stupid figure standing in there, and I about wet myself. They run an actual haunted house during Halloween season, and it was one of the props, and it was a good one. It must have been. Oh, my God. I just wasn't expecting it there. Yeah, I about wet myself. It was It was one of those, oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I have no Not words. necessarily my finest moment. Well, I do have words, but I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, say them. So I let out a little girl scream twice while I was at Penhurst. The first time was when I saw that thing. It got a little squeak out of me. The second time was when the freaking bat tried to take off my head. What the hell? What is up with that? Well, I was down in like a leech field, so like there's a bunch of like NASA mosquitoes hanging out in the area. So um, Mike was just eating. I was in a building. There should not have been a bat. It was um, huge. I am trying to keep up with chat, guys. I'm sorry. Um, hold on. We have a wait a minute. I'm a little behind. Uh, Darren wants to know before we go any further. Uh, Chris, what is your, what is on your bucket list? Uh, top of my bucket list is Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Do that. We gotta do that one. 
That would be a cool one. Yeah, that one's totally doable, too. The I don't think they meant left either. To, the only ones left on my bucket list are Penhurst, um, Lizzie Borden's, and then my fifth one was um, the Winchester Mystery House because I never thought I'd get there, so I never, I, I never went further. See, so when as long as you're on the West Coast, you've got to hit Alcatraz, too, right? And Queen Mary. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I never thought I'd get that far, so I, I stopped. They were all, like, local, and I've done them all, but... But Lizzie Borden's and um, Penhurst. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, we started putting together a list of places that we want to go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out what little what stops we want to do, and then we're going to map them out and make little road trips out of them. So, oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what, um, I think Cynthia was talking about, um, Cynthia asked this question. I'm way behind the chat. I think it was, um, she said, uh, Chris, uh, Scholar was like that, right? So I think she's talking about what Kelly was describing. Uh, that's Mike. Oh, Shaler. Shaler, yeah. Shaler, sorry. Uh, yeah. No, no problem. Uh, yeah, so Shaler is, it was kind of a cool opportunity earlier this year I did with Raven Rose Paranormal, and, uh, we... So the building was originally opened as, as Kevin's escaping me right now. It was either a cereal factory or a popcorn factory. Um, it closed down, and now, most of the time, it is a haunted attraction. And that is a very, it's a weird dynamic, because you have a lot of natural history there. Uh, but then you throw in the funky energy of, like, it, it basically is a place that manufactures beer anymore, and that's what it does. Um, so yeah, once you have a place that's actually like actually haunted, then you go to that haunted attraction factor up on top of it. It's just it's a, it's a very weird dynamic. Yeah, that would have to be weird. Now, where is that located? Yeah. Uh, Shaler, Iowa. It's uh, kind of Storm Lake area. Oh, okay. North it's right up in Roland and Cynthia's neck of the woods. Yep. Yeah, once once he said, yeah, I just, I read it as uh, my mass accent would say, and so I was really confused. <laughs> once he said it the second time, it, it, I, it caught on. I'm a little slow, sorry. Yeah, that's one I wasn't able to go with him on, and I want to get back out there, so. Someday. Someday. Um. Some more people popping in, and um, Kyle said he just finished officiating a wedding, and I'm sorry for the couple. Um, <laughs> I, I always give my condolences at weddings. That's why I never get invited to them. Right. <laughs> that, yeah. They I think it's amusing funny. when you show up with a sorry for your loss. Yeah. All right. All right. RSVP. I'll bake the next one. <laughs> oh my god that is the best response yeah, ever yeah. I'll, I'll make the next one but thank you for the invite sorry Kyle I'm just being funny you know I know it's hard to tell <laughs> I plan on coming to every other one of your weddings yes yes so. oh that's awesome I'm checking to make sure I didn't have any others, but thank you, Kyle, and um, I'm sure his wife's listening too. So, Michelle, thank you. Uh, Darren says it's expensive. Waverly is expensive. He's heard it's three thousand dollars for one or two nights. Uh, last I checked, eleven fifty-eight a night, ten person. Ow. Cap, and then they start charging per person after ten. Yeah. Same. I said if we get a bunch of us together. Yeah, Penhurst is not exactly inexpensive either. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Louis Transalleghenie. Oh, we don't have that. Are why, you, isn't that why, isn't, why isn't that one come up on the list? I yet? don't know. Are, are you keeping a list? Mentally. Mentally. <laughs> That's what she oh, said. I hope you're you. Yeah. It sounds like a joke, but it's actually a really Actually, story. yeah, it actually is. The kid's got a memory that's just out of control. It's, thank God, because I can't remember shit, so. Well, 
why we're a good team. That is. That is. <laughs> uh, let's see. He didn't find any music when I told him he's smarter than he looks. <laughs> hey. Uh, It'd be worse if he said you're dumber than you look. So, you know, Chris, take compliments when you can get them. That's right. Always look on the bright side. People tell me all the time, I thought you were smarter than that. And, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. There are times that he looks at me like, how can you not be any smarter than this? And I'm like, I don't know. I definitely don't mean for my face to show. But it does. Oh, point. but it definitely does. We can't you control give me this our like... face. We can't control our facial expressions. They they speak the truth. Hmm. Hold on. Wait a minute. What? Cynthia's been to the Winchester house. She's been to Queen Mary, and they're going to transit. Um, I can't say the word. You just said Trans Allegheny? Yes, I can't Cynthia's say the word. Cynthia's going to Trans Allegheny? In October. When yeah. are you... Ah! Why did I not know this? And I don't know. Uh, Darren says, wow. "What's the one in Colorado where Ghost Adventures was at Asylum 69?" I have no idea because Ghost Adventures sucks, so I don't watch it. It's true, but he's referring to Asylum 49 in Salt Lake City. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I don't it's know. It's half an active like nursing home. And it's also like a haunted attraction. Oh, well, that's good. Know, that right? seems like a winning combination. Um, <laughs> People I love... confuse me. What? Sorry. What? I lost. I was reading. I didn't hear a word you guys just said, and that's the truth. <laughs> Chris was saying that the place that Darren was just talking about is half of a nursing home, and the other half is a haunted attraction. So, that's, when, that's just, so when Zach runs through with his shirt off yelling, demon, demon, all the old ladies are going to get excited. He's going to give a bunch of old ladies a heart attack. Don't fight me in the dark, bro. Yeah. Zach Vegas has got one thing going for him. Um, yeah, according to some people, other people do not find him attractive with or without a paper bag on his head. Oh, well, I was going to say, I don't know that I'd say I'd find him attractive. But, all right, what yeah, they're going to Muscles. Muscles are good. Oh, okay. So, that's close. All right. Ah, uh, Darren, Darren Buss says thank you, because that's what he was talking about. The only places in Colorado that I really know of is there's the Lumber Baron Inn, um, and I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's a ton more. Hotel. I was getting there. Kelly's all There's the lumber She's in. like, I'm the guest. I can interrupt tonight. That's right. <laughs> um, so the, there's the Lumber Baron Inn, which I've never been to. And then there's the Stanley Hotel, which would be phenomenal to investigate. You're going to be able to because they're not going to give you that whole hotel. So uh, Less well-known. I've uh, been been a few years. I was it's in Canyon City, Colorado, which is kind of sort of felt like Colorado Springs. I investigated the, Can uh, the Colorado Prison Museum, uh, which is really cool. It's the old uh, women's penitentiary. Uh, they still have like the last noose in the legal hanging in Colorado. There's a bunch of like shivs and shanks on display. There's still a gas chamber on site. Um, so that's a really cool occasion all proud of too. What's the difference between a shiv and a shank? I'm not entirely certain, but I just hear them referred to as different things, so I get both in case there's a difference. If anybody knows the difference between a shiv and a shank, I would be very interested. Well, I know it's two shank words. is something like, made from... A shank is made out of something non-metal. Maybe a shiv is made like out of something... Yes, yes. But maybe one's made out of metal, one's not. I don't know. I'll have to Google it. Hold on. You guys keep talking. Where's Mama Pat when we meet her? Yeah. The one's she, made out of, like, your toothbrush. The other one's made out I'm of, like, I'm Googling it. Pork. I left chat. I'm Googling it right now. But who gives people forks? I mean, you don't give prisoners metal. That just seems like that's a bad why, idea. That's why they make them out of other things, though. Like, toothbrushes. They just, they make them so sharp. Um, that. Entirely different brands. 
paper straws aren't smart. Yes, they are. They're weird. I don't care if they're weird. They're not killing sea turtles. Oh, my God. I've Wait, never seen a dead sea turtle. Do you live by the ocean? Then you've got, Of course you've never seen a dead sea turtle. You know what? I don't like your logic. I like him. I agree. <laughs> How do you spell Shiv? S-H-I-V. That's what I thought. And what was the other word I was looking for? Shake. Never mind. I remember. Shake. Never mind. It came up. It's the first thing as soon as I put it. A shake is a slang term for a knife that is typically made for something else. A shank can be considered a type of shiv. So bottom line is that they are both types of homemade knives. A shiv, though, is usually made from something already sharp, like it can be a razor blade attached to the handle of the toothbrush. All right, so I was kind of close. I think I had them backwards, but... Huh. If I still lived in Massachusetts all these years, I would have known, but the 20 years in New Hampshire kind of threw that mass part of me off, or else I would have had the correct answer. <laughs> and now all we need is that sound that it makes when it does the PSA, and it says, the more you know. Yes. That's a, that's a public service announcement, people. I have, I have, I should have said that before. I have a bunch of sound effects in here. Am I getting back in? You have a bunch of what? Sound effects. But Did you, you? Yeah, uh, but the guests can't hear them. Only the listeners can. So, like, if I want to make fun of you, I'll put in laughing sounds, but you can't hear them. Only the people listening can. Well, that seems rude. That's why I don't do it. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go back to and listen to every show that we do to see what sound effects you put in, aren't I? Never. Never. Unless I told you. If I were to do it, I would tell you. Because I'm the type of person to be like, hey, I'm making fun of you behind your back. Yeah, that's all right. I would expect nothing less. How close I'm do you pretty sure it's that noise. <laughs> <laughs> we did what to who? I'm sorry, I started laughing halfway through my question. How close are you guys? You guys go to Illinois, right? Uh, we are almost. I can see Illinois on the little GPS map. Nice. Can I make it bigger? Oh, there it is. We've, oh, we've almost been on air for an hour. Not that I'm complaining, but it's, we've been on a lot longer than I thought I was going to be on. Shay! Shay, guess what? Shay! Shay, guess what I did? What? 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 <laughs> I cross all four states. Did you do booze, boobs, and borders without me? <laughs> I didn't stop and drink, but when I flew in, I landed in D.C. And so, like, immediately coming out of the D.C. airport, you're in Virginia. And then I drove into Maryland, and then I drove into Pennsylvania. And I was thinking about you the whole way. Yeah. Because I'm like, drinking <laughs> four states. You're like you can do two, but the next the next time we do three or four, you have to be with me. Yeah, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that next time. We, we just tried. have to plan better. Yeah, Mama we Pat, did try. Mama Pat was being very patient with us that night, and she was losing patience. There's no way she was going to let us drive an hour and a half to the next border. By the time that I left that bar in Maryland. And was standing in the middle of the road laughing at the vigilant hose company. Probably yeah. shouldn't have gone into Virginia and drank more. No. No. Pretty sure. Yeah, I said, like you said, it was an hour and a half away, so we, we did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Vigilant hose company. That was the best. Yeah. You know, there's nothing like a vigilant hose. She's the here, so we is. H-O-S-B, but still. <laughs> oh, that was the name of the order. drink. Thank you, Darren. Darren put in tight dot, 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 dot. He's been asked. Oh, before. yeah. What was the name of the drink? Is Darren? He it's put in tight. No, no, tight snatch, right? Tight snatch. That's I right. was enjoying a tight snatch that evening. Yes, I was. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed many tight snatches. I shared my tight snatch around the table. I did try it. I tried it. I think I, I limited the number of tight snatches I enjoyed. Yeah, no, you didn't drink that much. We're making it sound much worse than it was. No. So you only had a few drinks. No. Night, and it was over 
we had dinner and hours that was the and thing. hours. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're leaving out of this whole story. We started drinking at like 5 o'clock and we ended at like 3 in the morning. So we may have had a, a, fair, a decent number of drinks, but we spread it out over a lot of hours. Decent, and we, we had like and investigated three or in the four middle. at the most with ma- much food in between. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there was... I wasn't driving. I had a few margaritas. I'm not going to lie. Darren's dying. D- Darren, don't die. I- I'm hoping he means he's laughing, but, you know. <laughs> oh, Kiki, you can't sleep up here. No. Oh, my dog's on my couch, but my mother's on her way here, and she's going to be sleeping on this bed, and she's going to kill me. Yeah. all good. Stay, baby. Nothing like waking up with a mouthful of dog hair. My dog doesn't have hair. Well, she does kind of. Uh, a it's little. just not a lot of it. Yes, a little bit. All right. Anybody in chat have any final questions for any three of us? Because, um, yeah, and we've already questions. been on an hour. Just talking about the time. What? What, Kel? What do you have coming up, Chris? What do I have coming up? I got a lot of them. Oh, for anybody in the Iowa area, um, for the first time ever, there's going to be a uh, public paranormal investigation at a place called Spook Cave and Campground, um, hosted by myself. And, yeah, so there's going to be four dates, uh, September 26th, October 1st, October 12th and October 26th, um, where we will be investigating three separate locations on a 90-acre plot of property in a single night. Um, so some sort of the history on this place. Spook Cave actually gets its name from the origin of the cave itself. There's not a whole lot spooky uh, to the history of the cave that contributes to the name. Uh, but there was a place called Cuba, Iowa, which doesn't exist anymore uh, because a 20-foot wall of water came in in 1896, leveling a town and killing almost 20 people. And that's about where our lake, like the campground lake is now. So we'll be investigating that. we got a creepy basement of a building, and then we will be doing a hour-long parallel investigation inside with cave itself. And this will be the first time anybody has really ever had the opportunity to do that in a public setting. So, if that is something you're interested in, uh, for my shameless, uh, grab me on my shameless plug, uh, you can call and book your tickets at the Spook Cave store that is open every day, 9 to 5.30, that is Central Standard Time. Uh, the number is 563-873-2144. Nice. And if it, it's going to be a good time. I've lived there for about three years now. And I, I can confirm the location is haunted. I will confirm that as well. Yeah. And he, he's kind of downplaying it, guys, but this is a big deal. I mean, um, a lot of people have asked to be able to do paranormal investigations there and to be able to go in and, and do what he's doing, and they have consistently said no. So um, I've been barking up a tree for almost three years now. Wow. Yeah. So this... This is a big deal, and, you know, um, we're hoping that it's going to go well and that it'll be something he gets to continue every year, but just on the off chance that they change their mind, you don't want to miss it this year, that's for sure. Um, If there's an event on Facebook, feel free to send it to me or share it to Paranormal Buzz Radio's page. Yeah, the uh, the official event page is probably going to be made sometime in the next few days. Nice. Uh, we just ironed out all the details for ticket sales and all the all kind of like the fine details that come along with organizing an event. Um, yeah, the event page should be up soon. I'll be sure to share that. Yeah, I'll share it for you guys. No problem. I'm excited for it. I'm going to go up one of the nights. I can't make all of them, which kind of bumps me out, but I'm going to go out for the October 26th. At least she gets to go to one. Right? Yeah. All right. I'm going to do a quick, um, so season, this is actually technically the last episode of season one, um, which I said before you guys joined us. 
So season two is coming up, and it's actually starting in two weeks. And August 30th, <laughs> whoop, whoop, um, we have Charlotte Harding coming on. And then September, which unfortunately my my lovely love of my life, Miss Kelly, is off in <laughs> September. But... Kelly sucks. Her schedule is unfriendly. <laughs> yeah, but I had to take time off, and the you know it just didn't work out. I just you know I do have a co-host, a special guest co-host for most of September, um, and I haven't announced it yet, so it will be a surprise. But we have guests um, for all of September, so it should be fun. Um, we're hoping to make some changes come season two, more of uh, topic kind of shows. You know, we're still going to do the guest shows and the investigation shows, but more of a, um, Shay doesn't give a fuck anymore, and Shay's going to say really what she thinks, so it should get interesting. She drags me along right with her, it doesn't take much. You know, so, yeah. But, yeah, but you ring me in, but, you know, it's just, I'm going to do more, I'm going to do more, I've been doing this for three years now, and I'm going to do more of what I want, and, um, see, see where it goes, you know. Life's too short not to do what you want. Uh, yeah, I found that out. It really is. I'm trying to read you, the chat. You. We make no promises of what's going to happen. That explicit marking that's on our show, we mean that. Yeah. <laughs> Heads up, folks, don't bring your kitties. I, I, I go into Raven Rose chats, and the, I'm, they, before I even say hi, people are yelling, fuck. Like, that's my that's my code. Like, they see me, and they're like, fuck, yeah. fuck, 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 fuck. I'm like, I don't say it that much anymore, but it's still, it's heartwarming. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Darren, I do not like the flashlight game. I think it's stupid. It's unscientific. And, no. But thank you for making me laugh, because he says that just to bust my balls. Uh. 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 Kyle's saying, uh, do you pain in the ass? He'll say, yes, so you'll leave them alone. Yeah, that's true, too. Yep. Yeah. Josh saying fuck. Love you too, Kyle. Alright, guys. I am going to close this out because this is supposed to be like a 20-minute show. And you guys were awesome. And I so appreciate the support. Um, Kelly, thank you last minute for joining me. Chris, um, maybe in October you can come back. I know. I think it's September 22nd you're going to be on Spoopy Talk, which is also on this network. So... We can plan a few weeks yeah. after that, but you're welcome to come back anytime you want. Absolutely. Yeah, whatever works for you. Shameless plug. You know. Yeah. Shameless plug again, guys. We are heading to the Spook Show Con. You got it. Um, in DeKalb, Illinois. And it's actually tomorrow from, I think, like 11 to 8 or, so, or 10 to 8 or something like that. Um there's a link on my page. If you guys are anywhere in the area or even close enough to road trip it, it's a fun show, presentations throughout the day. There's an investigation that evening that you can sign up for at the Egyptian Theater, I believe is where it's at. Um, Chris is there vending with Paranomatic. I'll be there. Chris Sutton's going to be there. It's Mike uh, Rick Rickersnecker, or Rick Secker, which is really, no, it's the Gypsy. They call him Rickersnecker. It's the best thing in the world. Rick Snecker. Um, Mike Rick Snecker will be there in Conan. Um, I believe Vanessa Hogel is going to be there. Um, Ursula, the, 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 the something. Ursula B. Um, yeah. So, anyway, it's lots of cool people. It's going to be a fun event. If you're anywhere near, drop on in, say hi. Yeah, we'll I shared it all over. After. I shared it all over PBR. Um, uh, social media too, but as soon as the show ends, I'll share it again on the Facebook page. So everybody awesome. go check out Kelly and Chris and say hello and everybody else because those are some awesome people. And I'm going to do really quick shout outs before we go. Um, 
My dog is so confused. I haven't done a show in so long. She doesn't know what's going on. Um, we had we had Kyle, Kyle, um, Cynthia, Darren, Kim, Josh, Wolf. Um, I'm sure Michelle was there too. Thank you, Michelle. Josh Smith, of course. Darren. Oh, I might have lost my guess. Not sure, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. Uh, la, la, la. I lost my place, so just give me a second. Oh, they're back. There they go. Uh, Josh, Kyle, Wolf, Kim Purvis. And now my chat is just repeating, and I'm going to miss a bunch of people. I think that's about it. If I missed you, I got you in the beginning. I'm very sorry, but my chat will no longer scroll which is a great feature of Spreaker so um Shay's Paranormal Chat will be back full time in two weeks that's um two weeks from night tonight August 30th 8pm Eastern 7 Central with Sharla Harden and Lyle Lotz so join us then and until then guys um be kind to each other be nice don't forget you never know what's going on in somebody else's life even when you think you do, you never know. Show each other kindness. Have a great night, guys. Thank you for listening. And for all things Paranormal Buzz Radio related, check out our website at paranormalbuzzradio.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. 